If you know someone who has everything or wants nothing, here are all the f**ks I give for them. One of the most common questions I'm getting right now is, what are Christmas gift ideas for people who have everything or want nothing? These are people who are notoriously hard to shop for. Sometimes they just don't want anything. Sometimes if they want something, they just go get it, which is objectively kind of annoying if you buy yourself anything between November and December that someone else could have gotten for you. So try and cool it if you're that person. But I want to give you some idea prompts to help with folks who have everything or want nothing. And as a reminder, this is not a list of specific gifts necessarily. I don't like gift idea lists. I find them to be really impersonal. So what I like are gift idea prompts. So it's sort of like a little riddle that you have to figure out. And in the process of solving that riddle, you come up with something that's a bit more personal for your person, something that I couldn't guess. And as you may have guessed from the intro, I do have an acronym for this one as well. So F is find an expert. In other words, don't come up with everything on your own. Go find someone who's really good at what they do and hire them to provide the gift instead. Some of my favorite go-to examples are, you know, if your person is very sentimental, hire a family photographer to do a session. And by the way, especially if you're a straight guy like me, a lot of the invisible labor related with an event like this goes completely overlooked. So the gift is not enough to say I'm paying a photographer like that in itself is not necessarily a gift because there's a lot more that goes into it. You need to find the photographer. You need to hire them. You need to pick a date for the session to happen. If you have kids, you need to help pick out the outfits and make sure that they're dressed and make sure that you help create the list of let's say your your needs and wants for that session. In other words, what photos do you absolutely have to have? If you've ever read Fair Play or you're familiar with the Fair Play method, this is just called CPE or conception, planning, execution. In other words, you are responsible for this task entirely. It's not just you finding a photographer and paying for them. You are taking full responsibility for the task. That's an actual gift. But to extend this a bit, you can find experts in other areas as well, uh, sometimes in a way that is sort of novel, and that in itself is an interesting gift. For example, you can hire all sorts of people off of Etsy to do random things that you wouldn't expect. Like, you can hire someone off of Etsy to do a tarot card reading. They'll do it virtually over Zoom. And they usually will, like, record the session and give it to your person afterwards so that they can refer back to it. So if you think that they would find that to be really interesting, it's not all that expensive to do something like that. And it's a cool, unique gift that they would definitely be talking about for a while. There are other things, too, that might feel a little cheesy on their face that your person might really like. As an example, you could hire caricature artists online to do drawing. So if your partner's a little cheesy, they might actually like that idea for a gift. All right. The U is upgrade. In other words, a nicer version of something that they already have. This is usually a safe bet for a gift because you know that they already use that thing. One of the best examples I could give would be cookware. So if they cook or bake a lot, find the thing that they use the most and upgrade the version of that. So if they bake a lot, they're constantly using measuring cups and measuring spoons, but they're plastic, upgrade them to stainless steel. If they cook a lot on the stove, upgrade them to a nice, I, I want to say it right, le couce. Uh, <laughs> I always say La Crusette, right? But I know that's wrong. So I, I think there was like a TikTok where they said it right. And it was like La Crusette. So I want to get it right. But, you know, it's nice, fancy cookware. It's good, high quality cookware. It's, it's a nice high impact volume item that is a significant upgrade over what they probably are using. And randomly, like if they have a lot of jewelry that they're cleaning, if they have eyeglasses that they're cleaning on a regular basis... I cannot explain just how much of a game changer having an ultrasonic cleaner is. It doesn't take up much space. It does an amazing job of cleaning out all the grit and grime and glasses and jewelry. So something simple like that, that doesn't cost too much, that can have a really big impact on their day-to-day -day lives. Also something that's really cool in here. All right, so the C is contained or container. And the way that I like to explain this is it's the thing that goes into the thing or the thing the thing goes in. The best example that I could give for this is if your person likes coffee, you either get them coffee, so the thing that goes into the thing, or if they already have their coffee that they like, you can get them a very nice, you know, airtight container for their coffee to go into, so the thing the thing goes in. This one works especially well for people who have a lot of stuff already and, you know, they have everything that they want because you can give them a container for their stuff to go into. Or on the flip side of that, if you're giving them something to go into their existing containers, it's probably going to be a consumable, again, pointing to coffee, you would eventually use up the coffee, 
so it's not like it's taking up a bunch of space. K would be keepsakes, and this is for the more sentimental person out there. Photos are usually a safe bet in here. In fact, this pairs really nicely with that first one that we were talking about, about finding a professional. So if you were to hire a family photographer, as an example, to do a session, you now have some really great photos that you can use to create keepsake gifts. So it makes a nice follow-up gift. If you were to hire a photographer for Christmas, then when their birthday rolls around or Mother's Day or whatever, you can then take those photos and turn them into a new gift. Simple things that could turn into a recurring tradition like creating a photo book for the year, a digital picture frame where you can update the photos throughout the year, or even taking a photo that you both really like and putting it on an everyday item that they use, like a mug. Those can all be really thoughtful, meaningful gifts. And most importantly, it's not like you could go out and just buy that thing. It's something that would have to be made. And it would be specifically for them. All right, and then the S is subscription services. And there are a lot of different ways that you could go with this. One of my favorite go-tos, especially if I'm buying a gift for new parents, as an example, or a family member who may have just had surgery and their mobility is a little bit limited, is most grocery stores that do personal shopping, like curbside pickup and things like that, they usually charge a fee for the personal shopper to go around and pick up your groceries, even if you're going there to pick them up. And so most of those stores also sell a subscription that would waive that fee for the entire year. You can buy that subscription for someone else, and so their personal shopper fee would be waived throughout the year. They can just order their groceries online and either drive curbside to pick them up or maybe even hire someone to bring them to them through Instacart or whatever. And obviously there are a ton of subscription boxes out there for just about anything that you can imagine, any interest, any passion. All it takes is a little bit of Googling to try and find another service. So investing that little extra time can be really meaningful. Just make sure that you order this one early enough so that the first would arrive before Christmas. And to give you a specific example of a subscription service that you could get that would not necessarily be a box and would not necessarily be something that would have to permanently stay in their home would be a company called Urban Stems. Now, I want to clarify, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just think their subscription service is very interesting because they let you subscribe to fresh flowers. They will send you fresh flowers on a regular basis. And they have different tiered plans depending on how much you want to spend. This would be on the pricier range of gifts, but if your person really likes flowers, it can be a really thoughtful idea. So again, those are the that I would give in terms of idea prompts for people who have everything or want nothing. Ultimately, it's up to you to take those prompts and figure out how they would best fit your person so that that gift is personal and meaningful. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you want more specific ideas, check the link in my bio.